Hello, this is Daniel Mart, and today I'm going to be doing another review, and this one's going to be for Unbroken, which is directed by Angelina Jolie. Um, so yeah, this movie stars Jack O'Connell, John Hargleys, and Garrett Hedlund, Takasami Ishihira, uh, Finn Whitwork, Jay Courtney, uh, Bezeno Amaro, John Magaro, Luke Treadway, Ross Anderson, C.J. Valeroy, um, John D. Leo and Alex Russell. Um, so, so yeah. Um, before I begin, though, ten seconds spoiler warning as usual for those who have yet to actually um, watch the watch the movie and haven't already. Stop the video, go check it out, and then come back and watch the rest of this review. Ten seconds spoiler warning as usual, starting now. Okay, so 10 seconds are up, so for those that have yet to actually watch the movie and haven't already, please don't comment down below or be messaging me that I never gave you a fair warning, because as usual, I did. So yeah, Unbroken, um, what's it about? As usual, quick synopsis, likes and dislikes, and then the rate. So basically, this is about the true life story of Louis Zamparini, who is an ex-Olympian um, for track. He was an ex-track Olympian runner. Um, who was drafted into World War II, and this is basically his experience in World War II from beginning to end. Um, you know, how he was in a plane crash, um, him and his two friends, or two comrades who become friends, um, had to survive out at sea for a couple, for a while. One of them dies out at sea, then him and his other friend, Phil, um, they have to go through hell and back in, in a small, I guess, holding, I, I guess in a jail, I guess you could say in a jail, in Japan, in a, in a Japanese jungle, until until they're split up, and now Zamparini, Louis Zamparini, has to um, he has to endure through more hell, um, in a concentration camp, um, where where the ruler of the concentration camp, the leader of the concentration camp, called Watanabe, he and he takes a very odd liking to him, and what like liking or obsession to him, um. So yeah, I'll get into that later. Um, up until the end of the war and how he lived, and then it gave gave us a couple of details of how he lived after the war. So yeah, I mean overall it was a great movie in my opinion. Um, I have very little complaints with it. The acting, uh, for um was, for the most part was great. Same thing with the writing. It was great for the most part. Overall, I, it was a very enjoyable movie, especially due to the fact that this was a true story. Um, one thing I, one more thing that I think makes the movie a bit more meaningful, me meaningful, um, is the fact that Zamparini, um, Louis Zamparini, um, he, considering the fact that this, this is a true life story, Louis Zamparini actually did die recently, about in June or July. He died in June or July. So many of the, so many of the experiences he had, he did tell to Angelina Jolie, because this is based on his life, and it's also based on some of the autobiographies that he did. So, you know, it's kind of cool to, um, you know, get to have both the aspects from the person who actually li lived through it, as well as the books. Um, I mean, overall, it was a great movie. The action scenes, I mean, the action scenes at the beginning were great. Um, so, yeah, the acting um, was great. Um, and everybody in the, in the movie was great. But I do want to point out that Takasami Ishihara, who was the Japanese, um, he was the Japanese concentration camp leader, and he he was uh, he was good. I want I want to say he, he was actually pretty great, um, but his character was just a total asshole, and I I can just imagine that he probably was like that in real life. Um, Wantanabe, um, his I'm not even gonna try to say his first name right, but Wantanabe is his last name. Um, basically, Wantanabe he was. He was basically one of the wanted war criminals from Japan, from what I researched after the movie, right? And basically, Watanabe took this weird obsession with um, Zamparini, which is, I think, one of the things they portrayed best in the movie, this weird aspect between um, Zamparini and um, Watanabe, this weird relationship they both had. And basically, Watanabe considered Zamparini a friend because of his attitude, but, you know, obviously because Wantanabe is the captor of Zamparini, he ain't gonna basically trust him at all. You know what I mean? 
So I think that was one of the best things they did portray in the movie was that um, weird relationship between between the two characters. And I did research um, Watanabe after the movie, you know, in, here on the computer. And it was weird because they, um, they did get a quote out of him or something right before he died in like 2003. Because he did die in 2003. Um, and I, they interviewed him at some point, and they and he, they said that he um, he had a what every time he tortured someone, he had some kind of sexual obsession over it. He like he got he got sexually aroused out of torturing people. And that was really weird, and you could kind of see it in the in the movie. You could kind of see how every time he's torturing um, somebody, and he seems to have some kind of weird attraction towards it. Like he wants more torture towards the guy. So yeah, and it's also he's also described as possibly being bipolar or schizophrenic or or just straight up jealous because I mean many people from from that time would describe him describe him as being calm one at one point, then beating you up like um beating you up almost beating you half to death, um like two minutes later and then offering you a plate of rice or a shit ton of food, uh, like five minutes later. So, and then beating you halfway to death again, and then letting you be free, or as free as you can in Japan, in World War II. So, yeah, he, you could tell he had some problems, and the actor, he did a great job. Um, I do think, though, he was a bit over the top at times, but I, I want to believe that that's how the real person wa was a bit over the top, because of the possibility of him being bipolar, schizophrenic, or whatever the case may be. Um... So yeah, I mean, I kind of had like this hate-like relationship between between the actual character because I liked the way he was portrayed by just you know the guy, the actual character was a complete asshole. You just wanted to kill um, if you even got a chance to. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's the best aspect of the movie they portrayed. I mean, other aspects of the movie they did portray well. I mean, the, they did have some flashbacks throughout the movie, and I do think those, um, especially the second flashback, especially the second flashback. Um, the flashbacks were good, but the second flashback in particular, I do think that one could have been condensed a bit. Um, I do think that one could have been condensed a bit. Um, and there's many scenes throughout the movie that could have been condensed, make it shorter, because the movie is about two hours and 15 minutes, or an hour, or two hours and a half. And I do think they could have shaved off about 20 minutes if they, you know, would have shortened or taken out unnecessary scenes. Um, which there are uh, a couple from time to time, but overall it's a pretty great movie. Probably, probably my favorite movie this year, if I have to say, or one of the favorite movies of this year for me. Um, I mean, the acting for the most part is great. The writing again is great. Um, the chemistry between all the characters is great. I mean, overall, most of the mo the majority of the stuff in this movie are great. Um, but I will say though that it, it does take some time to get into the movie because I really wasn't into that into the movie for like the for the first 10 15 maybe 20 minutes because it just felt a bit rushed and you know the first 15 to 20 minutes minutes were good because it was action but I do think it was a bit rushed but again I think that I again that I think that had to do with the way the scene was uh, made and whatnot and I think that some of those scenes in the first 20 minutes could have been condensed or shortened or whatever but overall it was a great movie and really, those are just nitpicks in my opinion. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, and 6 being decent, I give the movie a 9 out of 10. It's an incredible movie, a great movie, especially if you love true life stories, war films, and crazy psychotic Japanese guys. So yeah, that's basically it for now. Basically it for now. Um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I do movie movie reviews, TV show reviews, and comic book reviews. So definitely do stay tuned for that. Besides that, comment down below on your thoughts on the movie. Have you seen it? And if not, why not? And if you have, what are your thoughts on it? Comment all that down below. Let me know. Like the video, share on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. And that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart signing off. Mm -hmm.